And there we go. We're done. So we've got Jeff in the studio with us. Jeff, Jeff Clark. Hello, Jeff. Welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. It's great to be with you guys. Well, thank, thanks for, for, uh, for, for sparing some time. Now, uh, before we subject you to um, our, our harrowing 10 minutes of questions, I, I just wanted to do a little intro for you so that everybody can get up to speed. Um, Jeff is a US-based uh, senior marketer, analyst, and business advisor. Um, he's worked in top positions at Forrester, Serious Decisions, and a bunch of leading software companies. He's heavily involved in the Citizens Climate Lobby in Northampton, that's Northampton, Massachusetts, where he works on federal and state climate legislation, lobbying and business support. So it's fair to say he's eminently qualified to help, to help us understand the sheer scale of the problem that we're facing. And not only that, but he's a really nice guy and a true gentleman. So welcome to Stream Aid Podcast with video. Thank you. And uh, thank you for the introduction. And did you say eminent or imminent? I, I didn't catch <laughs> Just checking. Eminently qualified, but um, yeah, I was. Um, I, I, I don't know what. What do we call this? this? Is a podcast with video, so I'm not I'm not quite sure what the branding is. But um, um, anyway, so thank you for uh, for putting some time aside for us. Anyway, now I just wanted to just check because um, you're based in Massachusetts. Um, my wife is actually from Cape Cod um, originally, so um, I'm familiar with the area. How, how has the weather been for you? Because you went through a bomb cyclone just recently. We absolutely, well, so we did not, the state did. So on the eastern part of the state, you know, Cape Cod, Boston, there's a town in Sharon, Massachusetts that got 40 inches of snow. So we got about a, a half a foot, six inches. So uh, so it wasn't, it, it wasn't too bad by our standards out here. And it was just enough to uh, put the skis on and and go around in the woods and the golf courses. That's right, because I, I heard on another podcast, I think, well, it was Ian, Ian Truscott's podcast at Rockstar CMO, you um, you do Nordic skiing. Yes, I do, yeah. Wow. Uh, it's, well, you know. Does everybody <laughs> do that around your way? <laughs> it's... <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do anything that's terribly challenging. But you know, it's like when, when the weather is the way it is, it's like you got to get out and have a reason to get out. When, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And my, my, my son's in Norway, so and I was in there. I was there in December, and so, I mean, everybody there is just like because the weather is so gloomy, they're just out all the time, running, skiing, snowshoeing, whatever. Good God, it's like some, some yoga advert out, out there at the moment i can imagine <laughs> yeah <laughs> now anyway uh, you and i we had a, a chat a few days ago about obviously what we're all trying to do here at stream aid and you very very kindly offered to to come and and sort of talk to to talk to the gang here but one of the the kind of standout takeaways that i got was that you know obviously the mission is to try and help companies and to help businesses um, sort of adhere or apply more green ways of living or green ways of doing business. But, you know, we're all, we've all got this kind of vision of this utopian um, sort of green future where, you know, the air is clean, the ozone layer is healthy and the icebergs aren't melting. You know, the, the forests aren't burning down and the plastic is turning up as leisure wear for us all to put on when we go running and stuff like that. But, and then on the other hand, if that doesn't happen, everybody's saying, well, we've got this dystopian view where the exact opposite happens. And, you know, it's literally hell in a handcart. But when you were talking with basically what you were saying was that we're never going to get everybody together, you know, at the same point at the same time. So and right in the middle is this thing called this heterotopia. So the two ideals kind of run side by side. So the, the question that I really want to get to is that, when you're talking to businesses, what are you advising them to be mindful of in their, their kind of short, medium and, and sort of long term view? I mean, what what are you sort of uh, it, it sort of helping them out with? Well, I think, you know, one thing and I, th I think the uh, the term heterotopia, which which you mentioned, I, I think is I mean, that really encapsulated because, you know, when you think about almost any big transition, you know, you solve one problem, you create another problem, you know, we right. solve the problem of all the horses, you know, dirty in the streets, you know, in the, in the horse and buggy era. And then now we've created cars that, you know, pollute the air. And, and so, you know, there's this constant going through these, these cycles and, and I mean, it's just part of human, our human impact on the world. And so, 
you know, we could solve, we could solve the carbon problem in the air, but you know, may not solve the plastic problem, or we could create some other problem. And, and so, so that's where it is, you know, it, it's hard to say we ever get to a point of utopia, but the, the, I think the one thing is that when you look at any type of evolution, um, you know, whether it's species, whether it's the way we do business, it's like evolution usually happens very quickly. So, you know, I, I've certainly known about global warming for decades since I went to college, which was a long time ago. And, um, and we've been talking about climate change, you know, on the public sort of uh, policy sphere, we've been talking about it since the 80s. And so, but now here we are in, you know, 2020s and things are really starting to move in terms of renewable energy, in terms of electrification of transportation, electrification of home heating, cooling. And so, so if, if, if I'm in a business today, I have to start thinking about the fact that, well, those businesses, those ways of doing things have evolved relatively solely over, you know, probably the last three or four decades, right. but they're going to start hitting an acceleration point because that, you know, it's like all of a sudden, you know, the, the I guess, you know, it's like the earth shifts a little bit and then everyone starts moving towards that. So what you have to be really cautious of is that, is that, you know, you're planning, I mean, there's a lot of companies I used to do uh, advisory and consulting on planning. And it's like, you know, a lot of companies really struggle to plan the next year. Uh, and, and it's like, well, do you have a strategy? And the strategy is typically a two, three year time frame. You know, it's a horizon of which we have an understanding of our competitors, our audiences, what they're buying, their needs. And I can, I can plan to that. But what I think this time really gives us the requires us, I should say, to think, you know, five, 10 years out and to say, you know, if I'm in a business, um, what are the threats? Uh, what are the opportunities that are going to be out there in five years and in 10 years? Uh, or what are the risks? You know, so if you sort of think of a typical like a SWOT analysis or, a, uh, or where you put in uh, risks instead of threats, mm -hmm. I need to be doing my research uh, probably talking to my customers and just thinking about what, what are they thinking about for five or 10 years out um, and, and start to prepare your business. You know, where, what do I need to do today? What do I need to do in a couple of years as I'm, as I'm looking at how that, that, uh, you know, things are going to change and, you know, the, the, the changes could be innumerable. It could be the markets. It could be your supply chain. It could be the environment, your customers, uh, live in. It could be what they consider their top needs. Uh, it could be your, you know, your employee base, their skills. All these things, I think, are going to be very fluid in five to ten years. Isn't that um, really scary, though, Jeff, for a lot of businesses? Because the pace of change is so rapid. If you then say, yeah, but what, what's it going to look like in five years, Nick, or ten years? Do, do you get a lot of businesses just scratching their head and saying, I have no, I have no idea. How am well, I, how am I supposed to see a future that, uh, that could change so rapidly? I, I mean, I, I, it is, I think it is, uh, you know, scary to an extent. And, and as I said, you know, a lot, a lot of businesses really struggle with just sort of the, the more rudimentary annual and planning and strategy cycles and, and just to do the, the discipline to do it. Um, so, um, so thinking a little further out requires really, you know, doing some research, talking to analysts, talking, doing maybe some of your own, um, you know, uh, first party research to see how those markets are going to change. And, and I think the scary part really is for all of us is that, is that, is that, you know, people aren't thinking that far out and they're not, antici they're anticipating more of the status quo is going to continue. And, um, yeah, there was a great, um, there was a great uh, excerpt in the uh, New York Times. Uh, I think I can't remember. It was last November, and it was called "Snap Out of It, America." And the whole theme of it was that we're kind of like, you know, we we used to think of ourselves, or we probably still think of ourselves as a really innovative country, but we're kind of, you know, settled into this lack of political movement, lack of ambition. Um, there's certainly no lack of ambition to making money, but most of the making money is on the short term, not the long term. So we sort of lost that, that long term, you know, when we invested in the highways or the railroads or, you know, in, in labor. It's like, what are those, what, what did that mean? Because the payoffs came, you know, the payoffs came, you know, decades down the road. 
So, um, so we're, we're not in that mindset right now. And, um, but I think that's imperative um, for where we have to be. And certainly there are a lot of companies, you know, the, certainly in the headlines you hear about, uh, you know, Microsoft going net zero in whatever it was 2040, 2050 or something like that. So there are people thinking ahead and making some big bets. So the problem is if you're caught, you know, you're caught in, behind and you're not thinking about where the market's going to be going. Jeff, really interesting what you're talking about here. But for many businesses, small to medium sized enterprises, what we find is that trying to go greener, trying to do the right thing costs more money. And for small businesses, certainly at a time when, you know, the recent pandemic has impacted small businesses, uh, you know, the purse strings have got tighter and tighter. We all want to, you know, do the right thing for, you know, to be better. But what can we do as small businesses, you know, to uh, mitigate that? You know, this huge cost to implement things in our organization that might be recycling. Uh, it could be uh, lo using less energy, maybe LED lighting. All these small things add up. But what would you say to all these small businesses globally around the world? What could they do? What sub just small things could they do? Well, I think you have to think s smart. And, 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 and certainly, I mean, this is where... You know, when I talk about the environment, it's going to change quickly. When you think about the fact that, like, renewable energy from a you know cost per kilowatt hour is now on an equivalent with with fossil fuel energy, and and where electric cars in a very short period of time are going to be cost competitive with internal combustion engine cars. So a lot of the investments. Well, so one thing is, it's like you don't need to throw all the money into it right now. Think about the changes you need to make over a period of time. I mean, I think of myself as a, as a homeowner and it's like, you know, I would, I'd love my, my house to be a net zero house, but you know, when I need to change the furnace, I'll make the right decision. When I need to change, you know, to do, I don't know, tightening up the house or whatever it is. Um, I have solar I panels. So yeah, I'm thinking about, okay, when, when do I actually make a, a decision to get into battery storage because my power goes out twice a year. So so that's one thing is to think about when you want to make those investments and don't necessarily think you have to put it in all today. Um, the other thing is, is just that these, I think the green, I don't know what the term is for it, but it's like, you know, there's the, the fact that everything green is going to be more, more expensive. That is not necessarily the case. And it's certainly not necessarily the case now for certain, in certain markets certainly will not be the case in, in several years in other markets. David raised a great question there about how uh, small businesses uh, can st get started. But from gleaning from what you've just shared with us, Jeff, it goes even before the, the practical steps and the, um, the mindset um, is something that we need to tackle before we even think about, you know, putting a 10 year plan together. So how can we, you know, the purpose of Stream Aid Live is to, um, you know, to uh, encourage businesses to consider. And, uh, and of course, the first thing will be the, the mindset bit. You know, um, it's easy for us to, you know, look at companies like Microsoft and, you know, they're making a commitment to go net zero by 2040. And then for small businesses like us to panic and think, oh, we can't possibly do that because, and then it's easier to, you know, we, we actually had this conversation offline uh, where Keith and, uh, and Nick David and I were, were suggesting, well, it's easier to do nothing than to start something. So even before starting with a practical step, how do you, um, Jeff, uh, with the businesses that you've worked with in the, um, in the past and currently, start with having a conversation in the first place, place to look at the mindset and, and the possibilities, what we can do before we create that, um, you know, yep. the practical roadmap? Yep. I mean, it, it's, an, it's an excellent question. And it is, um, I mean, it's, it, it, this is one of the things that's hard to talk about in generalities because, you know, you get into any specific business in their markets, then automatically you can say, oh, okay, here's what you would need to focus on. And I think all of it is the mindset is the future is going to be different, you know, so it, it status quo will not persist. So therefore, what is what is that different future look like in my business? So I have a friend who uh, used to run a, a car dealership and he actually still works, you know, part time consulting and working with car dealers. And it's like they're worried that it's like, you know, our traditional business model is on uh, really survives on maintenance. 
So I sell a car and I get ma- and I and I make most of my profits on the fact that I'm going to be doing maintenance on that car. Well, you know, five years from now, you know, there's a million electronic vehicles on the, in the state of Massachusetts. There'll be about like a million electronic vehicles on the road. Big big uptick. All of a sudden, those don't require a lot of maintenance. A lot of those are going to be sold directly from a Tesla or you know some other company, and so. I just have to be thinking about the fact that that you know my business may um, it's going to be radically different. It may dry if I don't think about the future. It may dry up. So that's where you you also start to get in the conversation about well, I mean I could put money into things or I could make investments and they seem like I'm stretching myself. But if I don't, I'll I'll go out of business. So I maybe want to maybe I want to be thinking about my my exit strategy as opposed to my investment strategy. You know, uh, and it just it's it's going to be very different for different businesses. Wow. That's amazing. And uh, I mean, talking of the, the, I mean, you mentioned the infrastructure, I mean, and and there are two definite um, kind of um, sort of areas that, 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 that require attention. One of them is kind of government driven infrastructure stuff, you know, bridges, roads, flood defenses, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, we were we were talking earlier about the uh, the sort of where all the innovation is happening at the level below that, sort of in the private sector. And I was just keen to try and get your kind of experience and the benefit of your knowledge. In the, I mean, what are you seeing out there in the marketplace that that companies? So, if a company wanted to sort of get into doing a green thing from scratch, you know, to, 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 to sort of being part of this, this whole movement. I mean, what are the areas where you're seeing the most kind of innovation that is going to be really useful? Yeah, well, certainly um, the whole electrification of the transportation sector is an area that there's a tremendous amount of innovation in. And um, as I said, I was just in Norway last month. Well, it's like, you know, there's charging stations all over the place. My son lives in an apartment building where almost every uh, parking space has a charging unit. Right. Uh, there's Teslas, you know, it's like, you can just, you know, it's like every two minutes a Tesla passes you. Uh, and so, you know, so, you know, that is, I think they're on the leading edge because this is happening, you know, around Europe and it's slowly happening in the U S it's going to happen in China, but that's, that's an area where there's just going to, it, it, it's going to just absolutely take off. And there's there's the individual vehicles or passenger vehicles, and then a lot of the new innovation because a lot of that is existing technology that can be refined. But then you get into the the real new innovation is going to be electrification of medium and heavy duty vehicles. So, you know, uh, places that have fleets, you know, the postal service, you know, or, or you know, any state government or whatever, they got these big fleet of vehicles they're under obligation to go net zero by sometime in the next few decades, depending on what state you're in. And so, I mean, that's just a tremendous amount of money that's going to be spent on how to take these medium and and heavy duty vehicles and make sure they can be electrified or stored batteries, you know, buses that can be used as storage as well as run the bus, (laughs) you know, or power storage. Um, So that's an area I think that's, that's, you know, again, that's evolving really quickly now, but it's, it's, you know, going to be taking off for some time to be. Then the other thing is to think about the uh, areas where, um, you know, companies that have a certain business model, they're going to struggle as we move to more cleaner technologies. So, uh, you know, the uh, fossil fuel companies will be investing a lot of money. I mean, there are investing money in things like carbon sequestration and hydrogen fuels, so some of these things that, you know, maybe what are the fuels that are going to run the big ships and heavy duty trucks that are hard to electrify? And so uh, there's going to be a lot of investment in, in that area. And um, and then you get utilities. Um, utilities are, you know, age old business model. They're very risk adverse. They want to keep that business model as much as possible. So, you know, so the whole grid modernization, battery storage, uh you know, new forms of uh, nuclear, like more decentralized nuclear technologies, they're going to want to throw a lot of money in that. So, um, so those are areas that I think have a, a, a lot of, a lot of area for growth and innovation. Um, and people can get involved at, at various levels. I mean, I, I remember talking to a guy who was coming up with a, a new type of air sourced uh, battery, you know, a way that, that you can actually create a charge 
you know, with cer certain metals that can create a charge just off of the air and oh. can run small devices. So, you know, when you think about the, the battery storage problem, there's kind of a grid level battery storage. There's your home or business level battery storage. There's your appliance level battery storage. There's your chart. You know, it's just, you know, there's, there's a, a lot of room for innovation at all of those levels. And Jeff, do, does this level of innovation, um, would you say it sparks hope from an environmental point of view? Is this what hope our future looks like? I think it sparks hope. And, it, you know, I've, I've listened to so many people talking about the fact that it's like, well, you know, we could, we could do this if we just decided today and we put the money into it. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's like the technology is there, the, the, you know, the money is certainly there. It's just not being put in the right places. And, and frankly, in the, you know, to a large extent, this is where the problem with our policymakers lagging behind, you know, the, the industries are, 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 you know, they're, they're, they're moving ahead and our policymakers are not necessarily doing the things that they can do to actually push it. Because I think one of the things that, you know, Keith and I were talking about is that, you know, things are changing, but they're just not changing at the pace that we need them to, whether you're trying to get to utopia or heterotopia. Um, and, and I'm one of the areas that I'm working in the, on the state of Massachusetts are what are the, the pieces of legislation and the investment the state needs to make to make sure that all of these things, I mean, we have a gigantic wind power resource off of our shores. We could, you know, the Northeast states could power the rest of the country uh, easily, but you got to set up that infrastructure to, you know, put those, those uh, wind farms out there and bring that power in, distribute it around. Um, so, you know, when's the state going to actually put the money into that to make sure that that happens and we're successful? And, you know, we're, we're no longer an importing state of energy. We're an exporting state. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Has anybody else got any follow-up questions on that or are we, we good? No, I think it's been, been great. Uh, really interesting, Jeff. So much useful information that we've got to share with the world. Um, so it's been no, thoroughly enjoyable and... Uh, yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity good, good to share it. <laughs> good to hear a message of hope, though, right? A kick up yeah. the ass to the um, the people in power. Come on, yeah. you know we want yeah. to crack on. But it's nice to hear someone who's who's on the cutting edge of where people are investing their money. Um, that there's 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 signs of of hope of progress. Uh, well, you know, it's actually it, happening. One of the things Keith and I talked about was in the the concept of the heterotopia is the fact that you know we think about movies like. Uh, like Blade Runner or one of my favorites, <laughs> Brazil, where you see these combinations of dystopia, but there's where people are living well and making money, but there's people who are living in the sort of the dystopic world. And I know my my mother grew up in in Pittsburgh in the height of the you know the boom in the steel business, steel, where the, yeah. the the skies were black at noon because they were making steel, you know. Or you know you know I'm you know Keith, you're from London, and so London yeah. in the early 1900s was a mess with people burning coal. But you know, I'm not that old, Jeff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said I said it was. That's prior prior to you being born there. But anyway, it, 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 but we did get through these things. Sure. And we you know we got onto the other side, and you know, so it's uh, we can do that again. I think it's uh, I think it's great to have I mean somebody with your kind of perspective on it I think has been you know it, it's very enlightening because I, I think what I what attracted me most about about the way that that you um your about your point of view is the fact that you know yeah we we do all want the you know we want to achieve the green ideal and we want all that to happen but really feet on the ground is that you know, the reality is that, you know, everybody's playing a different game of catch up and they're starting on different different places. So I think, you know, to, to the more realistic view is that, you know, that, that we all want to get there, but it's going to take us a different, you know, different times and different methods to be able to get there. And I think that, you know, that, that being able to invest in that that kind of those kind of projects and for us all to 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 slowly do the right thing step by step. And to make make our next decision a green decision, I think is going to be the uh, uh, the right way forward. So I, I absolutely do appreciate you uh, you coming on and, and talking to us, Jeff, and and helping us understand that. So um, 
you know, I hope that, um, you know, on uh, 21st of June, when we uh, when we kick off on the actual live show, maybe you can come on and uh, and give us another benefit of your uh, your wisdom. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll uh, we'll pull a few clips of Blade Runner to run alongside. Yeah. It. <laughs> and hopefully we're a little further along in the conversation. That we, I that hope so. But, yeah. but the one thing's for sure is that the politicians that are supposed to be leading us are leading us from the back. And I think it's going to take. Right. It's going to take us to, you know, people like us to be able to, to sort of uh, to, to lead the way forward and certainly people like you to help us. So anyway, here, once here. more, thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate your time and thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Take care all.